Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh um, Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'kfiruhu Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sajiati a'malina Man yahdihi allahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falahadiyala Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu wa ba'di Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh once again um, We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has kept us and protect, uh, protected us up to this moment uh, Today I want to discuss with us briefly, very briefly <coughs> On some of the rules of Etikaf and some of the rules of Zikat al Fitr um, I make gesture in a direction of um, where we have very well-known um, differences of opinion or where you have intense differences of opinion. So I may uh, likely gesture in that direction but will not dwell on it. I will just likely indicate that this uh, is perhaps what I s- s- deem to be the stronger opinion or the strongest opinion as the case may be. So we're discussing the etikaf. Uh, especially we are in the last 10 days of Ramadan. This is when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu would uh, commence and, uh, his etikaf. So, what is etikaf? I am using the book. Uh, I'm going to be reading from the book because of its arrangement. I, I initially thought to use uh, Mukhtasar al Khalil. And I dropped that because uh, it goes into a lot of details that um, may not be of um, relevance um, in in the discussion we won't talk about. The also of using a telkin of um, uh, God Abdul Wahab. So uh, it's okay. I think fikhu miyasar al fikhu miyasar. I know from the ulama of um, printed in Saudi Arabia recent, uh, in, in recent times uh, has a, a a better arrangement of materials when it comes to. Um, short discussion such as this. Um, ذكر المنس مصنفون يعني حفظهم الله ورحمة من مات منهم في الاتكاف. They have a chapter here about اتكاف. You say so. What the first thing is um, defining. This is the way the jurists deal with stuff. This is the way they discuss issues. So the first thing is um, defining this particular thing. What is the rule on this particular thing? What are the conditions and so on and so forth. So. What does itikaf mean? From the linguistic angle, it means luzumu shay, or hapsun nafs alihi. For you to um, be attached to something, to 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 stay with something, um, and then to to um, the the way the the way the, the Arabic word haps means to imprison oneself. <laughs> so, by, by, you know, the word imprison may not be the best best word to use. Anyway, it means that for one to continue to stick to a particular thing or stick to a particular place, as a as a case may be. That is the meaning linguistically. <laughs> sure. However, in the Sharia, ah, um, the linguistic meaning may differ from. Sharia means at times like salah linguistic means a dua uh, in that verse uh, it means pray for them it doesn't mean observe the salah on them so salah ordinarily means prayer but in the sharia it came to mean those actions those words that we start with the takbir and we end with the testing so um, in the Sharia, itikaf means Luzum al Muslim Mumayyiz Masjid al Ta'atillah. Luzum al Muslim al Mumayyiz Masjid al Ta'atillah. For a discerning Muslim, the Arabic word Mumayyiz it refers to a young person uh, who is not yet biologically matured, but who who knows who has a sense of what is right and what is wrong. So this individual. Um, uh, is allowed to do the the etikaf. So we may have a boy or a girl around the age nine, ten, and is discerning. He knows what is right and what is wrong. So we, when we say etikaf, it means nuzum al Muslim majiz masjidan the ta'atillah. For a, a discerning Muslim and above 
to stay in the mosque, to stick to the mosque. Remember earlier on, I talked about um, the the linguistically it's a kind of resume shape for you to stick to something. So, um, you devotedly um, attached to something. So it means you are staying in the mosque. You are sticking to the mosque as an act of worship. In, in, Mali book, in Maliki books like Muqtasar uh, Tekin, it's a kurba. That is kurba. It's um, an act of worship. And then there's a bit of difference of opinion. Is it because when you talk about what is sunnah, when you talk about acts of worship, when you say, when you say sunnah at times, we need to understand what sunnah is this person about. Is this, is this particular person talking about? So the, the Maliki have a range of sunnah. We have the sunnah to muakkada. This sunnah muakkada is just like something that is composed. We have what is um, a mandub. This is what the itikaf is. And we have what we call nafila. Nafila is also sunnah, like the mandub, but it's of a lesser category than the, than the, the mandub. And that's just by the way, anyway. So it, it is an act of worship. The individual stays in the mosque. It's an act of worship for that, uh, for that period. Uh, what is the rule? We have defined. The next thing is, what is the rule in the sharia? Or oh, is it compulsory? Is it supererogatory? Is it uh, wajib, uh, um, sunnah, um, mubah, haram, makru? What is the rule? Uh, the rule is that it is sunnah, or kurba to Allah, it is sunnah. It is highly encouraged, but it's not compulsory. If you do not do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not punish you. But if you do it, you have immense reward from it. And what is the evidence that it is uh, legislated and um, and sunnah Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah Allah was addressing the Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail so itikaf is not something that is even the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah says and then we we instructed them purify my house for those who are going to do tawaf who are going to go around the Kaaba ولا عاكفين تزدين اتكاف تزدين اتكاف حتى في الأمم الماضية يعني هذا الشيء مشروع الاتكاف مشروع even in those أمم that have gone those commit those believing communities that have gone in the past اتكاف uh, has been legislated um وروكا is used and then you have this verse which is usually the commonly cited verse for the validity of اتكاف ولا تباشروهن وأنتم عاكفون and do not touch your wives. Do not touch your wives. This verse was coming in the context of the month of Ramadan. A very applicable verse. It comes in the context of Ramadan. Like saying, do not touch your wives. Not physical touching. Uh, not touching <laughs> of the wives of the Prophet um, <clears throat> um, touched him uh, when uh, he was in the mosque. So, um, do not have sexual intercourse with your wives, is what this um, verse is saying. Do not uh, go into your wives, do not have intercourse with your wife while you are doing itikaf in the mosque. In the mosque. So, this evidence shows that yes, itikaf is legislated. Then we have the hadith of Aisha radiallahu an, narrated by Bukhari, a Muslim, where the message of Allah read Aisha of the Allah and I said, and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can't take for the Ashr al Awakhir. The message of Allah is to do a tikav in the last ten days of Ramadan. Hatta tawafahu Allah until Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala took him. That is, the message of Allah Himself used to do a tikav. And of course, when whatever the message of Allah does, we know it is um, legislated according to Allah. So we have studied evidence in the Quran, evidence in the Sunnah, and it is one of the very good advantages of Al Fukul Muyassar. It says, Wa ajma'a al Muslimuna ala So it, this is, is a three day approach to things, and it's very good. You have cited evidence in the Quran, evidence in the Sunnah, and it backs it up that the, the ulma is agreed. Al itikaf. That the ummah is agreed that the itikaf is uh, legislated. Um, then fathabat sunniyat al itikaf wa mashru'iyatuhu bil kitabi wa sunnati wa ijma. So ends the 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 fact that the itikaf is sunnah is established with the Quran, the sunnah, and then the ijma uh, of the of the jurists. So it does not become compulsory unless the individual takes another. 
an oath and he makes it compulsory on himself. Ordinarily, it is sunnah. But if he takes an oath, it becomes compulsory on himself. Then it is called, what are the shurud of itikaf? Shurud means conditions. And then technically, uh, as far as fiqh is concerned, or as far as fiqh is concerned, if the shart is not found, if you do not have the condition in that particular act of worship, that particular act of worship is null and void. The Sheikh Amir Bahjad says in this another Musaf he said, وَعَدَّ مُشْرَطِ يُفِيدُ الْعَدَمَ وُجُودُ مَانِعٍ فَكَذَاكَ فَعْلَمَ وَعَدَّ مُشْرَطِ يُفِيدُ الْعَدَمَ وُجُودُ مَانِعٍ كَذَاكَ فَعْلَمَ when you do not find the condition in a particular act of ibadah, then that part, that act of ibadah is null and void. So, what are those things that makes the itikaf valid? Number one, an yakun al muqtakif Muslima mumayizana akilan. The Muslim who wants to do itikaf should be mumayiz. I said this morning. I discussed this earlier on. Muslim must be Muslim. If he is not Muslim, act of worship will not be accepted from them. Uh, Islam is a condition for all act of worship, so it will not be accepted from them. Akilan, the individual, the individual must be sane. The individual wants to do itikaf must be sane. If it's not sane, then itikaf is invalid. So three things here: Islam, tamiz, well akil, but must be Muslim, must be discerning, and his best. The, 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 if he's young, he must be discerning to know what is right and what is wrong, and then he must be sane. Um, if it's not compulsory that a person have, uh, has reach biological maturity, al below, or the person must be male, not females, also do it for the term of the was shot to thani, and the, the the second condition, uh, that they must the person must intend, must have the proper intent. Uh, we know, of course, the popular hadith in and now is Arba Arba Um. In Namal Kuli Imri Manawa, we Allah says, In Namal, we Allah's messenger said, In Namal Amal, Biniya, or Biniyat, or In Namal Kuli Imri Manawa. So, you want to carry out an act of worship, you must have preceded it with the proper intention. With the proper intention, yeah, that's what Allah gives us a firm understanding of of um, of the deen. So, if I go into the mosque and I stay there and sleep there, whatever I do there, without intending as an act of God, I will not be rewarded. I will not have the reward. That is what we're saying. So, it kind of needs you to intend that yes, I want to go into this mosque to have to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Short of third, the third condition, and yakuna li itikaf fi masjidin. That the itikaf be in a mosque, and this based on the verse I read earlier in Surah Al-Baqarah. Wa antum wala tubashiruhuna, wa antum akifuna fil masajid. And even the verse as the earlier one about Prophet Ibrahim, wa antahira bi tiyali taifina, wa akifina, shows that the place of itikaf is the masjid. The place of itikaf is the masjid. In Muqtasar Khalil of Sajid uh, Khalil, that's the standard text of the Malikia. Um, um, they, they, they sort of discuss certain issues here that yes, the calf can be done in a mosque um, and it's also, of course it, it's not it's outside the scope of the Maliki yeah? it's something that we have scholars debating it what masjid should we do our itikaf so let me just, as I said, I will not go into the, the back and forth of the Fokaha just choose what I feel is the most correct opinion and then move on. So let me just give you a brief survey of the views. Just people believe that you can do it in any mosque. You can do it in any, any mosque, provided the salawat are, are done there. And then there are people who say that you can only do it in the mosque that the Jum'ah is being said. After you have agreed on the fact that etikaf is only valid in a the mosque, they now, and, this, and this is why we need to understand the, the way scholars differ. And be able to excuse ourselves based on these differences of opinion. Um, most of the difference, and it is also let me just mention a bit about this. Since people do not get what it means when we say some masail and masail ishtihadiyya, when we say masail and masail ishtihadiyya, we're talking about issues that scholars legitimately differ on. Well, in karo fil ishtihadiyat, and he ayla in karo ala shaks. لا نعنفه ونشتد لا عليه في مسائل الاجتهاد. We do not abuse him, cause him. This is a sound principle. 
across, believe right from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam till our own present time. Um, Zori move on once with mischievous, one would deny um, these things. However, we need to differentiate between Masail Ishtihad and Shudud al Ulama. Salatul Ulama. Shudud is different from Ishtihadiyat. Shudud are positions some scholars have held in which it flies against a nas. A nas is a yahmilu ma'anan thani. As you have a budget said in this, not most again, when nasu la yahmilu ma'anan thani. A nas is a, a text that does not have a second meaning. It has only one meaning. A scholar who goes against this, his position will be said to be shad. It will be shudud, zallah. Or it flies in the face of ijma. A sound ijma, like the position of Abdullah ibn Abbas about the owl. When we talk about in, in inheritance, Abdullah ibn Abbas had a position after the time of um, um, Umar ibn Khattab that we have a near agreement. He brought his own position that we should not have the owl in Miraf. This is shuduf. <laughs> so, these ones are the ones that we do not tolerate. If a person holds this position, would kill the person. But when we talk about um, Ijtihadiyat, it is mainstream scholarly opinion. Anyway, we are not discussing that now. I just wanted to talk about So we have a valid position is that it had that it, can be done in, in all mosques. Then another position is that it should be done in Al Jawami, mosque in which the Juma Apriya is being held. Mosque in which the Juma Apriya is being held. Um, that's the second position, and then we have a third position. Sh uh, 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 but it is not. It's it's not. Though it's it's not the majority opinion, uh, but it was held by some of the companions like Udifa, Ibn al Yaman, and then in recent times it was um, popularized by Sheikh Nasser al Albani. Um, that the the itikaf is not valid except in the three mosques. Etikaf is not valid except in the three marks. And then he related the uh, the argument that happened between Abu Musa al Ashari and Udifa al Yamani. Uh, Udifa saw people doing Etikaf. Uh, no? Um, Abu Musa al Udifa? Okay. Then uh, Udifa was discussing Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And said, Komun ukufun bina darika wa al Ashari wa kiruhu. That you um, see people doing it a between your mocks and the mosque of Al Ashari, and you don't condemn them. And then, uh, maybe they, they are correct and you are wrong. And he said, No, 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 I'm not, I'm not wrong. And I submit to Rasulullah, there's no itikaf except in the three in the three mocks. So you have this back and forth among the scholars on this. And you have uh, a shard position, as I mentioned earlier, a shuduth from one of the Maliki who says that well, you can do a tikav in your in your houses. And then in recent times, I heard Sheikh Mustafa Al Adawi also held this position. This is shard. It flies in the face of what we know that the majority of Jews have held across time. We do not do a tikav in masajid debates. Rather, we do a tikav in what are known as masjid. So. Um, we, we, we don't support this position, but these are the positions uh, that uh, scholars have <laughs> what, what is my own stance? Uh, I, Allah uh, Alam, I seem to prefer um, uh, that at least it must be a mox in which the Juma is being said. As to the three mox only, <laughs> I, say, I, I, I don't, I don't, um, uh, I don't condemn those who hold this, that this position. In fact, I rarely do a tikaf because um, I'm still not very clear about the strongest position between the three marks position and then doing a, 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 a tikaf in uh, uh, Jawami. So, you, I once heard somebody saw people doing a tikaf and went to them and said, You must leave the mosque. Why? So, because didn't you hear Mr. Vala say, La tikaf I left him? La, I must ala ijtihadiyya. Laka ra'yun, wa laka ra'yun. You have a position, others from you also have a position. So, we, in any way, we do not allow this to be a cause of rancor and conflict within the Muslim community. Wallah <coughs> wa'ala. So, um, it's they said, Wa an yakun al masjid al-ladhi ya'taka wa fihi to come with you salatu jama'a. It means the authors of this book are holding position that um, uh, <coughs> it's a mosque, it's, it, it can be a mosque in which it's not even a jama'a mosque. It's a mosque that they only pray jama'a there. So, how do these people reconcile? Um, how would the individual pray Juma and his company? So, yes, it is a need 
he would go out and pray Jumaa. Come back to the masjid of Jumaa. This is how they reconcile the position. It does not nullify their stance. <coughs> so, and then they said, At-Tahara min al-Hadith al-Akhbar. At-Tahara min al-Hadith al-Akhbar. Um, they are saying that the individual wants to do itikaf must be free from major impurity. What do we mean by major impurity? Prostration, nifas, postpartum bleeding, um, post-sexual impurity. You know, this also is a, is a bit of difference of opinion on this. And then we have to, one error some people also make is that they do not take the views of Sheikh Al-Bani into consideration. Uh, number one, and, and these are the reasons why you need to take this, this position of Sheikh Al-Bani into consideration. Number one, the books of Sheikh Al-Bani are very popular with Shabab. Not only Shabab, with Mashaikh. The books and the views of, if Sheikh Al-Bani holds a position, Chances are that you will find it very popular with Shabab or Salafi. You, you will find it very popular with them. Number two, Sheikh Al Albani is a Rajul, Bahithun, Mutkin, Mutabahir. So you need to read his works so that if you are disagreeing with him, you not be abusive with, the, with those who this position, and you'll be able to disagree with him academically. Why am I saying this? That is started from the angle of Tahara. So the majority of scholars believe that you have to you have to be ritually clean for you do, to do etikaf. They believe that the menstruating person cannot stay in a mosque. They believe that uh, the same thing for a postpartum. Uh, uh, Somebody was having a um, postpartum bleeding. Some believe that also the person in sexual impurity can also stay in the mosque. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, they will tell you that um, uh, we have a third that says the Sahabas will not stay in the mosque. They are um, ritually uh, unclean until they do it. So, anyway, scholars who put this book together. Uh, as for coming, sort of the opinion that uh, it must be free, it must be free uh, from al hadith al akbar uh, major impurity. So, for those scholars who do not hold this, the zahiriya that look, a menstruating woman can stay in a mosque, and um, so for them, they will say this is not a condition. So, if you're a menstruating woman, you can stay in the mosque, you will only not pray, and you know, you will probably also not touch the Musa with their opinion. So, this issue also is. Um, uh, an issue of diverse of opinion amongst uh, among the scholars. So for the majority, they will say that okay, you have to be literally clean for you to be able to do it. And this goes back to the issue of <laughs> So the next thing is um, what are those things that are required of our etikaf what is permissible for us what is what is the time of the etikaf so um what what is the least time we can have for our etikaf there is no um the message of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do his etikaf in the last 10 days of ramadan but we have a, we have um, we can have a minimal time of staying in the mocks uh what to who and for you to stay in the mosque for a period of time is the uh, foundation of itikaf, the pillar of um, of itikaf. Um, if the person does not stay in the mosque for a period of time, then um, uh, it is not valid. So scholars will say that it should be um, a complete day, the day and the night. So okay. some said no, it's not necessary. So. Um, so scholars here said that um, there is no and that there's no there's no limit to the smallest time you can use in a mosque but the best is for you for you not to do your itikaf for less than a day and a night they said that then a day and a night <coughs> so when they say that so whoever wants to um okay Whoever wants to do the calf in the month of Ramadan. When I was discussing the masajid, I, I, I there's a point I skipped. In this time of Corona, I mentioned Sheikh Mustafa al Adawi saying that we can do our itikaf in um in our homes. Uh, in this time of Corona, where do we do our itikaf? No, in as much as the mosque is not there, and we are saying that the itikaf in the masjid the masjid is a condition for valid itikaf, then it means there is no itikaf on us. So we can stay in our homes, stay in our uh, 
place you have left as a place of prayer for in our homes and do our prayers, read our Quran, do our dua in those places. But we will not intend etikaf. Based on the view of the vast majority, intending etikaf in such places will be a bit alam So <clears throat> whoever um the best period is the last 10 days of Ramadan. The, the best period is the last 10 days of Ramadan, as the Messiah used, also used to do. He does the itikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can't take the Ashra of Akhir in Ramadan. Hatta Tawafahullah in the hadith you mentioned earlier. <coughs> Whoever wants to um, commence itikaf uh, should pray, should enter his place of itikaf. This also is a bit of diverse opinion on when should the person enter the point of itikaf. Should it be the night of the 21st. The night of the 21st is um, to explain, of course, in Islam, the night precedes the day. So you you would go, you enter your place of itikaf in the mosque. The Messenger of Allah would have a tent. So, okay, you go to the mosque the night of the 21st. That is, if 21st is Friday, the night of Thursday. There are scholars who say, This is what you do. And there are scholars who say, No, you can start from the morning of the 21st, the night of the 21st. And the morning of the 21st. The scholars of who put this book together said that um now at Tikaf al Ashar Awaki in Ramadan, Sol al Fajr min Sabi Hati Yom Hadi wa Ishrain fil Masjid, a lady yin we itikafa fihi. Thumma yet hul fi itikafihi pointed with Ruby Shams Akhir Yom in Ramadan. For them they believe that you should commence your itikaf on the morning of the twenty first, and you will not leave and you are free of your itikaf on the last day when the sun sets on the last day of Ramadan. What are those things that are required, Mr. Habatu Tikaf? Uh, we want the person to be secluded for worship. We want the person to be secluded for worship. What is permissible for the Mu'takif? I think I've um, sort of dwelled too much on this Tikaf. What is permissible for the Mu'takif, for the person doing Tikaf? It is allowed for him to leave the mosque for what he has no other choice than to go. Like he needs to ease himself. Uh, or he needs to go out and eat and drink in, in as much as he has not brought this thing to the mocks. Uh, he wants to take his bath, wants to um, take his bath from Janaba, wants to perform ablution, all these are uh, allowed. He wants to speak to people, wants to, but he does not get, get engrossed. There are people who go do massage for do it to do it, and then they are with their smartphones. Uh, computers and Twitter, and Facebook, and Instagram. I mean, uh, this defeats the purpose of it. This defeats the purpose of it. So let's go quickly to those things that nullify our etikaf. First one, al al masjid al haja. For one to leave the mosque without there being a need. I mean, the etikaf in itself is staying in a mosque. You live in the mosque without there being a need nullifies the etikaf. Well, jama sex. And the verse I read earlier in Sato Bakra was very categorical about that. Well, to not touch your wives when you're in, when you're doing etikaf in the message. So you, your sexual intercourse nullifies the, the etikaf. Uh, the herbal akli. When one loses his intellect, when one loses his intellect, the etikaf becomes null. And void. Of course, we mentioned sanity also at, at that uh, at earlier on when we were talking about the conditions of etikaf. And then also al haidu wa nifas, al haidu wa nifas, which was mentioned earlier. And then al ridda for the person to become an apostate. So al haidu wa nifas nullifies the etikaf because what I said earlier, because of that defense of opinion among the scholars. And I mentioned earlier the scholars differ as to um the the permission the permission of um uh a menstruating woman to stay in the mosque for to, for scholars who hold that the condition you must be free of menstruation and postpartum bleeding if you start menstruation they will, will see that your, your etikaf is invalid so also read that uh even because an apostle or not i mean that like it it nullifies not just the etikaf it nullifies all deeds as is um or called the uhiya it can sort of zoom up all your good deeds become nullified. So if one becomes an opposite to doing this, this nullifies the itikaf 
uh, will uh, totally, and then uh, he has to uh, the takeoff is not accepted until he comes in most team again. May last month, I'll give us a family on Sunday every day. No worry, that call the other day. Um, the next thing also on this course is the cattle fitter. The cattle fitter, these are the um, important aspect of Ibadah they were supposed to observe in this um, uh, last few days of Ramadan. So, Zakat al Fitr um, is called Zakat of Zakat's charity, it's compulsory, it's attached to Fitr because it's attached to our finishing the fast of Ramadan. It's attached to our finishing the fast of Ramadan. So, and it's not about our wealth, it's about we, we give the cattle fitter based on the food items we have with us. So the, the authors of the commercial say, what is the rule and what is the evidence for that? It is compulsory. The cattle fitter wajibatun ala kulli muslimin. It is compulsory on every Muslim. Based on the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr, where he said, Father Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Salah Qatar fitr means in Ramadan, Sa'an min tamr or Sa'an min sha'ir. Ala al-abdi wal-hur wa dhakir wal-untha wa sagir wal-kabir min al-muslimin. Masjid Allah means zakat of fitr compulsory on everybody, whether like person is male or female, young or old, uh, free man or a slave, uh, in the month of um, Ramadan. What are the conditions also of zakat of fitr? Uh, zakat of fitr is compulsory on every Muslim, as I mentioned earlier, old, young, male, female, and so on and so forth. And so, and so, and so forth. And, um, you 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 give it from the food stuff the 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 common the staple food of that environment in the hadith of the Abbas, he said um he, he mentioned the misalla father rasulullah in same hadith i read earlier hadith abla ibn umar tamar that's a dry date sha'ir bali that the misalla but you can give dates and and, and sha'ir in Yoruba land. <laughs> Nobody takes that. Dates is seen as a snack in the, in this uh, part of the world. So it varies. It's a staple food of the environment you find yourself that you give as a cattle fitter. So we may give rice, we may give uh, curry, we may give uh, beans, greens really. And in the north, you may give you may give corn. Right, corn. I once had a position that look, why do you give people corn? Why don't you give them rice? And then um, I was, I was, I, I listened to a khutbah and was corrected. And no, it, it depends on this on the place you are in. In some places, people you giving people corn is will be far more appreciated than you giving them rice because that's, the corn is a staple food, it's what they consume. So just make sure that the best is what you're giving of the staple food of that particular. Environment. Now that's what I give us a firm understanding of the of the day. So we need two conditions. The first is Islam. The individual must be a Muslim. The individual gives a cattle fitter, or the person we are giving the cattle fitter on behalf of must be Muslim. And um this person must have food. Mm -hmm. And this food, this is a bit of his explanation. The food he has is sufficient for him for the day of the eight and the night of eight. The night of Eid, that the night is the night is precedes the day. The night of Eid and the day of Eid, he has food that is uh, left over. So he gives us a cattle fitter on this left over. If the food item he has does not will not be sufficient for that day and night, Allah SWT has not required the cattle fitter from, from him or her. So he gives a cattle fitter based on what is left over from from this. Um, same thing. If what was left over, let's say there's a man who has a wife and then four kids. If the left over for that food of a, a day and a night will be just what is what only what would suffice for the account of just a person, then he gives it for this person. Uh, and at times for some of us, it's not we we only we have the 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 money so that we have the food stuff at home. So you have to buy it. You have to buy the cattle fitter. Um, the food items for the cattle fitter. So. Um, what is the hikmah? You find the, the hikmah here is found the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas. He said, "Fadl Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam zakat al-fitr tuhratun tuhratun isaa'i min al-lagwi wa rafath wa tu'amatun al-masyakin." The zakat al-fitr was said to be a purification for the fasting person min al-lagwi wa rafath from our action, from our statements or actions that are unbecoming the month of Ramadan. Especially, well, maybe because of the lock lockdown. We will not experience some of this. If you live in Lagos, I mean, 
may Allah accept our fasting. So you see a lot of things. You, you really see a lot of things. <laughs> so, so much is, if it's right when you're driving, you, you know your gaze will be a bit difficult. So, it's like, and then even if you are driving in Lagos, somebody may drive very roughly and still cost you. And you may not know, you just also cost the person back and say, yeah. <laughs> so this is serious thing. We don't want to fast events to say this. So the God of Faith purifies our fast from our obscene actions and our obscene statements that we've done the month of Ramadan. And it also serves as food in Messiah King for those who are who are poor. Um Miala Santala gave us a firm understanding of, of, of the day. This is the hikmah of the God of Faith. We don't want the, uh, the the poor to be sad on that day. Miala Santala accept it from us. Um uh, the authors also add, "Wafiya idharu shukri ni'matillah ala al-abd." It's also uh, as um, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa taala that we were able to witness this year's fasting and we were able to fast it. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make us see a lot of it in our lifetime. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala um, um, take away this marad corona, this um, pandemic that has really affected things. Ish miqdarul wajib. What is the amount that is composed we give on the Qatul Fitr? Um, so an min sha'ir, so an min tamr, we use sa. A sa is arba to amdad. You have a mood. The mood is a type of measurement at the time of the person of Islam. Just as you have, we have in, 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 we have Congo in some places, we have Derika in some places. So the mood was a standard of measurement at the time of the person of Islam. So we have people who even bought this mood from Medina. If you have that, fine, alhamdulillah. Take them, I have, I had one, I didn't prepare very well, but I've shown it here for us to see and let me look if it's not um, very far from me okay. it's a bit far i kept some things in it so the mood is um uh, you, you you get the mood you fill it up with the full stop then you flatten it so for all this for an adult human uh and uh for Sorry, I said adult for a fasting person. So like the example I gave, a man with one wife, three kids. So he gives four of the mood for himself, four of the mood for his wife, four of the, four of the mood for each of his three kids. So if I have four wives and then like 60 children, so four mood on every one of them. So we, we, this is what we give out and we give to those who are poor. And it must be Muslims. Those who are poor and they must be Muslims. So, um... Uh, a group of people may give a staple food of that comment as I mentioned earlier. If you can give rice, like in your land, you may give. You may not give Gary. If you give Gary, fine. Give our last month what is best, and then also reward you what is best. So um, where did we stop? Okay. What, when is it compulsory? When does the cattle fit become compulsory? the cattle fit up in the Arabic shams mean lay later eight. It becomes compulsory the night of the eight. I said the night is the day. So if tomorrow is going to be uh, eight, the cattle fit becomes compulsory on me to give tonight. I must give it before the salah. Hmm? Whoever gives it before man adaha qabla salati for he has maqbula. When woman adaa about the salati, for he has in a salah court. We do not get lazy with it. We would give it before the salah. Whoever gives it after the salah, Mr. Bala said, is, you have just given salah court. You didn't give the cat of fitter. He's not give the cat of fitter. So we need to be very proactive with this. And then there is work to uh, Al Fadila that if it's not composite, you can give it um, a day or two before it. Uh, Abdullah ibn Umar used to used to do this a day or two before before it uh, walk to Jawaz a day or two before the eight. uh for a couple of eight uh, I'm a walk to Jawaz or a couple of eight beyond me or ibn Umar was here in the uh a day or two before before it so you can give the uh the card to the fitter then the masala Mm, uh, and then um, of course it's one of those uh, burning issues i'm surprised that's not started um trending on facebook uh hopefully it would in a few days time <laughs> and perhaps this will ignite this statement will ignite it <laughs> zakat al fitr is giving us for stuff it is sha'ira like like it's time for idul adha 
You see people buying rams so much so that the people know, yes, it's time for in Lada. You go to the Muslim community, you realize that it's time for, because see rams. Of course, people in the West may not have this, um, <laughs> they may not be able to show this because you, you have to go to the uh, slaughterhouses and the abattoirs over there. But in here, where there's a bit of um, freedom, um, you, you see people taking the rams, the goats all over, the camels in there. So it's like a sha'ir or something that is known that when it's time, Muslims will do this. So the same thing, during the time of the capital fitter, see the Muslims going around with full stuff with greens, weighing, and so, so the sha'ir, it's, it's, it's us to be given as full stuff. What they call jamahir al jamahir al fuqaha. This portion of the majority of the scholars in the Malikiyah will hanabila wa shafi'iyya, however, has a position that you can give the monetary equivalent of the capital fitter. I I am convinced with the position of the majority that will give the capital fitter as food items. And what some people do, whereby they 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 raise they make the the I mean, and this is one of the problems we have. When you say that there are different opinions on the issue, it doesn't mean that you don't you don't do tarjeh. It only means that you, you give respect to the person having this other view, if it's not a sharp position, if it's not a zella of an alim, you give respect to this person. But you don't, if you have done theology, you don't raise this, uh, these two positions on the same status. So about if our holds that you can give the monetary equivalent um, of, um, of the character, you have a back and forth among the scholars like this. Um, the position I who to be more correct which is, the question of is that you do not give the counterfeiter as uh, we do not monetize it so to say, I don't know if that is correct in economic terms however, circumstances of this coronavirus and peculiar situations may make us give the counterfeiter monetarily if you can find organizations that would help us buy food stuff with these with this um, money they are, they are the best they are the best, if you have organizations that can, they are the best get the money from us they'll, they'll be acting as our wakil if they don't do it they are the ones who have this thing then them um, they would buy it on our behalf offer give this account to theater on our behalf so because of this uh, um, restriction in lockdown or where, where places where the, the lockdown is more far more effective um we may not have any other choice than to give the money equivalent and this is why i said that uh, uh, people may have a back and forth on that. So, um, if if in a situation whereby they lock that, so but and uh, you can't argue that you can't bring you can't say that well the majority yes I agree I'm saying that in situations whereby the lockdown will not allow. I take for instance, um, Mox may not have the statistics of people who are poor people who need so and then telling them to come around, to come and get the full stop, full stuff would probably the same social distancing we've been talking about that government we should avoid it may lead to this. So whereby getting their account and sending money to them may be easier, it depends on circumstance. So what the Al Aslu, and that was a character fitter, yeah, to Amen. Uh me Allah Swatala give us a firm understanding with him. Uh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh I will take one or two questions if there are any. If there are none, I feel um we've touched on everything that is important for us to touch on. May Allah Swat Allah give us a firm understanding of the day. And no, who will do that? I will call it early. Okay. Okay. In the absence of uh, any question, I would um, call it a day. Subhanakallah, wa alihamdik, ashallah, ila ila ant. Astaghfirullah. May Allah bless the people who have organized this and make it uh, beneficial for us in this one year after. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.